Hello, Kaikus here. My puzzle Metroidvania bachelor project that focuses on procedural animation and has a character that can walk on anything is finally done. Well done! The Steam page as well as an early trailer are also done, so go watch the trailer and wishlist the game if it seems interesting to you, both links are in the description. And I finally have a Discord server, link for that in the description as well. Last time there wasn't much if I'm being honest, so this time we have a couple of new things, like player form models, new player form, speed up ability, new puzzle elements, procedural animation update, climbing enemies, 4 enemy types, more puzzles, special areas, world map, map UI, a fast travel system and some collectibles. The most obvious addition are the player forms with their respective models. Last time I briefly mentioned the directional bomb form but it kinda looked exactly the same as the base form so you probably didn't even realize it existed. There are three of them now and each of them has their own unique bomb. We have the yellow one with 6 legs, which is the basic form you start the game with. This one just plants a bomb that detonates in a small radius. The purple one with 4 legs that plants a directional bomb which shoots the projectile in the upwards direction. The aiming now works a little bit differently. Last time you always had this line indicator above you to help understand where you are going to shoot. But it looks kinda annoying so now when you hold down the plant bomb button you will get the indicator and the camera will move a little bit to help you see what is happening. I really like this one since it forces you to think about how to position and use the environment to your advantage to get the proper aiming angles. Of course I had to add a snapping feature since this would be quite annoying to aim otherwise. Now the moment you are close to something it will just auto aim it for you. And finally we have the blue form which has a bomb that shoots in forward direction along the curve, kinda like that aim thingy in Angry Birds. With these three done, I was playtesting a little and I realized that the game has a lot of walking and backtracking because it is a metroidvania game after all. So I got quite bored when moving slowly around. To try to solve this, I added a speed up ability that will just speed you up. Not the best solution ever, but I feel like it makes the navigation a little bit more interesting. I could have just increased the movement speed of the character permanently, but in some cases you want to move slowly and having a button that speeds you up adds more interaction from the player. To enable more puzzle ideas I added some new puzzle elements like these colored shields. I didn't have time to make them look more interesting, so they will get an art update soon I hope. They just force the player to use a specific bomb to activate a switch or a button. Quite a simple effect, yet it opens up a lot of puzzle ideas. You would like to just click the switch over here. Hey, well, it requires a purple directional bomb, so you have to find a suitable angle somewhere to activate it. I also got interested in shaders and I made this water blob, which you can freeze with the blue bomb and use as a platform. Till this point, every time you open up a connection somewhere, the object is always emerging from the water, which can get quite repetitive and also quite limiting, since I need water for that and I cannot just spawn something in the middle of the sky. That's why I also made a quick dissolve shader so that the activatable objects can appear in a cool way. For some reason I didn't know that shader graph is free so I actually wrote this shader. But in the future you can expect me to play around with the shader graph and see which interesting effects I can create. The procedural animation logic also got a big update, which is not as exciting to present but now it works much much better, especially when you are walking over cubes. With the updated logic, the player can also now climb enemies, which is really nice and opens up a lot of possibilities to interact with them. Since the game doesn't really focus on combat, I changed the way how I approach the enemy design and I thought that it would be nice if enemies can be puzzle elements or even puzzles themselves. I only had time to implement 4 different enemies, but you can bet that a lot more are going to come in the future. We have a huge enemy that wanders around the map over a red water. Sometimes he will step on the ground, which gives the player a chance to climb him and use him as a transport to a new location. He is not hostile at all and he will completely ignore you so you are safe in that regard. However, this guy has his own path to follow and you cannot really control him. So I added a weak point on his chest. If you damage this weak point, he will get disabled for 5 seconds, leaving you more than enough time to get off of him. So he is literally just a ride that you aboard on one place and then disable him to get off when and where you want. 
you can even see him on the map so that you know when you can catch him and yeah by the way there's also a map we will talk about that later then we have a small enemy that has a laser arm on his back you cannot really interact with him apart from hiding from his laser so he is more of an environmental hazard than a real enemy however he has to charge the laser first and he has his cool area that forces the player to hide which kind of spices up the gameplay a little bit his laser arm uses the inverse kinematic script and allows me to easily adjust it to aim in a given direction he basically has a player's leg on his back but it's cleverly used to be a laser then we have a large aggressive enemy that shoots projectiles from a cannon on his back this one is the closest one that you can get to an actual enemy because you can kill him to do that you have to climb him and destroy two weak points on his back however he is a ranged enemy which means he will constantly try to keep the distance between him and you so climbing is not that simple that's why he also has an area with a lot of hiding and navigation places where you have to crawl around and wait for an opportunity to use your speed boost ability and climb him. While on him it can also be a little bit hard to do something because he will rotate around and be confused really fast. Which is the reason why there's also a way to destroy his eye and then disable him from moving or doing anything. Finally we have my favorite enemy which is a static enemy glued to a piece of terrain that doesn't really do much on its own. If you get close to it, it will hover over you a little bit and then kill you in a single ground slam attack. However, if you have a form that has the same color, then he will just be neutral. But then you can plant a bomb on the ground and he will try to eat it and bow down, which will enable you to walk over it and use it as a bridge. This really encapsulates the puzzle element of the game perfectly, especially if you see this guy early in the game when you don't have the required form, and then come back metroidvania style when you unlock it. I really like this and this will probably be the direction I'm going to focus on in the future. Not technically an enemy, there is this sentinel guy that flies around the map and might scare you here and there. He gives a little bit more life to the game but nothing else apart from that, so in the future I would like to make him actually do something. Last time I said I was going to make separate puzzle areas and then combine them into a map, so that's exactly what I did. I made 20 puzzles in total, however I also needed some additional areas like place where you find second and third bomb upgrades or areas where you unlock purple and blue forms. Because of the fact that I was leaving optional connections when I was creating puzzle areas, when I needed to combine all of them into one map, a lot of paths were left open because I didn't have any meaningful optional content. That's why I created some collectibles and placed them around the map. This serves as a placeholder for something cooler in the future, but for now it's completely fine. Since the goal of the game was to decrease the system percentage by interacting with these infection points, when I was happy with the placement of all of the areas, I strategically placed these points around the map. And this is how the complete map looks like. This is probably going to be updated a lot in the future, but at least you have an idea what I'm shooting for. Some infection points are available naturally when you finish a couple of puzzles, however I wanted to push this puzzle focus even further, so now some of the individual puzzle areas are parts of a bigger puzzle that unlocks the infection point. This type of puzzle is visible in a couple of places on the map and the important thing is to tease the player with one or two pieces of the puzzle so that there's a reason to come back and figure out how to solve it later. Here for example you can click a switch in early stages of the game but in order to really reach it you will need all of the player forms meaning that you will probably solve it at like the end of the game. I really like this idea of the map being a puzzle in itself that consists of smaller little puzzles Sadly, I only scratched the surface with this here due to the time limitations, but this will surely be something that I will explore even more in the future. You remembered I mentioned the system strength and how it decreases when you activate one of these infection points? Well, I added this emergency button construct, which will open when the percentage drops below a certain value. When it's ready, you can click it and it will open something. With the percentage dropping, some enemies will also be spawned in early areas to make the backtracking more interesting and also show that the player action affects the world in some way. The same as with the map puzzle idea, I only scratched the surface here as well, which will be explored more in the future. Also, a quick graphics update, I made everything a little bit brighter and more inviting since you still need motivation to explore the world and I'm not sure that you want to do that if you cannot see anything at all. 
Till this point I was making puzzles with the island models and not terrain, which allowed me to move the entire areas around until I am happy with how everything fits together. Then I went over all of the islands and replaced them with the terrain that added smooth edges and allowed me to use grass to populate the ground a little bit, which added some detail but still has a lot of room for improvement. The graphics and overall environment details are something that I skipped in this project since I had a strict deadline and the focus was not on art but on coding. However, this will probably be the biggest focus in the future, how to create different biomes, how to make areas more memorable and how to increase the detail of the game overall since now it seems kinda bland in some cases and for a metroidvania game the world has to be interesting enough for the player to explore it. No game would be entirely complete without a map UI, of course. With some UI elements, you can see yourself on the map as well as the infection points and I even added a small mini-map so that you don't have to open an actual map all the time. To make the actual map UI, I used the orthographic camera to render the texture of the entire world map and then with the help of this little script over here, I save it into a PNG file. Since water looks weird when rendered this way, I used a green object instead of water when rendering the image, which I then used in Photoshop as a green screen to quickly isolate all of the playable areas. When the map image was done, I turned it into a sprite in Unity and placed it on top of the world as close as possible. Then I isolated the sprite map with a unique layer, which is only rendered by another camera, which then renders that into a texture, which is then shown in the UI as a raw image. Ugh. Why all of this pain if I could just use the map image in UI to begin with? Well, now I can slap a sprite icon on top of the player, set its layer to the same as the map, and now the player will appear on the map, which was then also used for other icons as well. This is such a push solution and I would not recommend it to anyone, but yeah, if you need a quick map and you don't have any time at all, you can try it. The biggest problem with this approach is that the map does not update when the player opens up a new connection, since map is a pre-rendered image. But I will leave that problem for the future, since I will probably redo the map and hopefully find a better solution which is actually recommendable. With the map being quite big and the game being a metroidvania, I needed a fast travel system. In the world, you can find these capsule-like constructions that will transport you to other unlocked points. I'm a big fan of the design as well as the animation for this, so it will probably stay like this. For now, you can unlock this with a simple currency, but since I'm planning to rework the currency completely, there will probably be another way for this in the future. So what is the future of this project exactly? Well, I created a Steam page so the wishlist spam can officially start right now. However, I completely fell in love with the concept and the future possibilities, which is the reason why I will not release this game immediately like I did with Ruins of Albion. And I will keep working on it until I make everything that I have in mind. You heard me say, oh, I will probably rework this or change this in the future for a lot of things, which means there are some stuff that have to be done. But this university version of the project serves as a good starting point. Some things that I'm planning to prioritize are art and environment details. Like I said before, the environment has to be more interesting overall, as well as have unique and memorable places, since it will be really hard for the player to figure out where to backtrack when everything looks the same. To add to the art section, I would like to have multiple biomes that have unique assets which make them easily recognizable, since now there is only this one green area as well as a small ice area. I also want an actual progression system. There is a progression in the game with different forms and bombs, but I would like to make it a little bit more interesting, maybe with some simple crafting system or something like that. I also want a main hub area, since right now the whole map seems kinda hostile, so it would be nice to have a place where you can just rest and possibly do all of the crafting if I decide to do that. Then of course I will add more enemies with unique player interactions. I'm quite happy with the ones there already, but there has to be more of them. Maybe a little bit of combat, like an actual boss fight, but not focusing on dodging and so on, more like right now with weak points and climbing. The same goes for puzzles. To make a bigger map, I will have to make more puzzles, obviously. Then map updates so that everything updates when you open up a connection, as well as a way to slowly open up a map when exploring, since right now you can kinda see the whole map from the beginning. 
And lastly, more abilities since now there is only free player forms as well as free bomb upgrades that allow you to have plus one bomb at a time. I will be happy to hear from you in the comment section below what you think about this plan as well as if you have some suggestions. My friend Lucian who did all of the music in my videos as well as games till this point is also doing the music for this game which is a nice thing. He is also open for other collaborations so if you need some epic music for your game you can contact him link in the description below lastly i have to talk about my overall development plan since by now there's like 100 different projects that i'm working on at the same time due to the different assignments i had at the university with the university done I'm not going to start any new projects until I finish all of the current ones. I think the best thing to do in order to keep my sanity is to finally release a sandbox. So I will prioritize it until it's released. By the way, go wishlist the sandbox link in the description below. After that we have Mendasium, which is quite a complicated project that will require a lot of time to do solo. This is the reason why I'm really considering the Kickstarter campaign for it to get some support and get some artists to help me speed up the development process. I worked on Mendasium behind the scenes, although there was no new devlog, and I think the demo with two zones should be ready soon. I would really like to hear what you think about this idea and would you support it because the whole idea of Kickstarter makes me a little nervous since I never did something like this. After all of that, I can then come back to Virium and do what I planned, kind of far off, but I have to order the projects somehow. I also want to thank everybody for supporting the channel since there are more than 3000 subscribers already, although I upload a new video every 3 years. Hopefully that will change now that I have more time overall, so look forward to some of those long-awaited tutorials. But that's it, I'm done, and until next time.